together but because our time apart is going to be hard what do I do uh, you you need to listen you need to listen doesn't want to get back together um, so you know res respect what he wants right West Texas uh, open relationships I don't care what consenting adults do as long as they're happy Oil field, jeez. That's no fun. When somebody says they don't want to be with you, your answer is, okay, I understand. And, and you know, you, <laughs> you don't want to chase after somebody who's running away. Right? You don't want to do that. You don't want to coerce somebody into being with you. Um, you know, the exception is, you know, if if they're under a lot of duress and, you know, it, you, you know that they're not doing this because of you, because of their love for you. They're doing this because they don't know what else to do. Um, but when, you know, guys, when somebody says, I don't, I don't know if I can do this, you know, I, I don't have feelings for you. Um, it's, it's too hard to be in a relationship. Um, right. Our time apart is going to be hard. I don't want to stay together because, uh, you know, we're going to be long distance. Do I wait to get back together until our time apart is over? No. No, you don't. Um, you really don't, my love. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't stay in limbo. Don't play the hoping game. Don't play the hoping game. I was talking to someone online there in Canada for three months. Just now told me his real name. My man says he feels like he's tiptoeing around me and my emotions and emotional reactions. What do I do? Yes, I got the book for you. Perfect solution, my love. Uh, fix that shit teaches you how to be in control of your emotions and when I say in control of your emotions I mean teaches you how to change your brain structure so that your emotional reactions are actually physically reduced now I want you to think about this for a second physically reduced so your capacity to feel stress fear and anxiety is physically reduced because you've changed your brain structure you would feel different. You would not be so emotional on the negative scale. Um, so you really do want to strengthen your relationship. You want to give your partner a chance to feel like they can be close to you instead of feeling like they need to avoid you, um, right? You want to create closeness and intimacy, but men don't get close to us if it feels emotionally unsafe. And this is what he's saying. He's saying being in a relationship with you feels emotionally unsafe. I feel like I'm tiptoeing around landmines. And think about this. A landmine is like a bomb underneath the earth. You don't know when you're going to step on it. And so your partner is saying this relationship with you feels like something is going to go off under my feet at any point. And this is not a comfortable sensation. If you want to have a relationship with somebody that feels like they can be close and intimate with you, you need to set up an environment that feels emotionally safe. So the book you want is Fix That Shit. This is exactly what that's going to teach you. You're welcome. I was talking to someone on, yes, we did that. Is it inappropriate for someone to ask you to be in a relationship over text? So here's the thing. Um, why don't you set the pace, right? Like, like, and, and, and by the way, like, do we, do we really need to, to be um, so micromanaging that nothing is good enough unless it fits the narrative inside of our head, um, right? Like, 
Like it's it's not good enough that they're generous with me. It's not good enough that they they got me a, a birthday card, you know, like because they got it on the day of my birthday or they got it in the week of my birthday instead of getting it weeks before my birthday because that's what would have told me that they cared if they got it weeks before my birthday and better yet months before my birthday. So. Um, you know, it doesn't tell me that he cares because he asked me over text, um, right? So if, if we can, you know, not demonize particular actions like that, uh, instead look at the whole picture, what is it about his behaviors that shows you that he cares? That's the question. Is it possible to fix things together when the other person has a lot to do individually? Um, it is possible, everything is possible, but ultimately um, somebody needs to take responsibility for their emotions and their behaviors. So, you know, my husband and I were married, we were together and I started doing what's and fix that shit. We were in a relationship and I started doing what was necessary to heal myself in order for us to have a healthy relationship. So yes, it is possible, but you in your behaviors need to match your intent. My intent was for me to take responsibility for myself. And so I meditated, I ate well, I, I exercised, um, I monitored my behaviors and I didn't vomit my behaviors. Um, my intent was for us to not fight anymore. So I wasn't reactive when my husband came home and tried to pick a fight with me. I thought about things before I said them. And, make sh and, and have conversations in my head and saw them through till the end so that I understood where this conversation was gonna go even before I had it. So it is possible, but you have to do the work. So please explain why a guy would come to my party and tell me he doesn't want anything and then get engaged. Um, so you need to understand that life begins when you ask the right question. And when the question is, why is the person I'm no longer with doing these behaviors, then you are thinking about the wrong thing, which means you are not thinking about the right thing, which means you are not moving in the right direction, which means you are not achieving what you want to achieve for yourself, which is happiness and a cohesive relationship with somebody you are building a life with. So you are distracting yourself and getting in your own way when you're spinning on why didn't they want me? So your mantra needs to be, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to be in a relationship with me. Every time you're asking yourself, why is my ex doing this? Um, so stop asking yourself, why are they doing this? because you are delaying your own evolution, your own happiness. What you do need to do, my love, is get comeback queen if you're still hurting over this last relationship and no more assholes to make sure you find somebody who's suited for you. What book do I need to read because I'm heartbroken? So Come Back Queen is a book that helps you heal with heartbreak. My boyfriend's female co-worker sent him a TikTok about relationship. He sees no problem with it. Uh, about I don't know what the TikTok is, love. Oh, yes, I actually did that yesterday. I controlled my reaction and emotions, calmed down and felt better. Yes. I still have feelings for an ex that I don't like, don't want to be with her, but can't forget. Um, so get coaching, my love, if this is something that you want to work on moving past. My husband grew up with an untreated borderline mother. His coping mechanisms are hurting our marriage. So if that's something you want help with, I would suggest a coaching session.
what to do if your partner tries to make you responsible for her emotions so uh, so basically what you're saying is what do I do if my partner uh, always comes to me and says I feel anxious um, I need you to change something I need you to fix me uh, I need reassurance I need you to give it to me because I can't feel good unless you do things it's it's your behaviors that my good feelings are dependent on so your script is to say to her I love you and I'm I'm absolutely here for you but I need you to take responsibility for your anxiety. I need you to meditate and eat whole foods and take vitamin D and, and go for walks and drink water and deal with your anxiety. You can be devoted to you every time you go into a space where you feel like you need reassurance. Um, but you need to learn to be the solution to your emotions and your thoughts. Oh, the TikTok was a girlfriend encouraging her boyfriend to check out other women. That sounds inappropriate. Uh, I wouldn't, and, and he sees no problem with it, right? So uh, your boyfriend is communicating with another girl who is encouraging, to look, encouraging him to look outside his relationship. And he sees no problem with that. So this is not a friend, by the way. A friend is somebody who supports your relationship um, and especially if, if you know if you haven't been introduced then that's not a friend that's an ego stroke so he basically picked up an ego stroke at work and you know he's he's allowing this he's allowing this disrespect so your choice of partner is a poor choice of partner if this is how your partner behaves How can I tell my boyfriend that not asking me questions about my day or other things is making me sad? So basically what you're saying is how can I tell my boyfriend that I want to uh, manage his behaviors? So, right, because this, this is like what you're saying here. My husband, uh, most days, like 99% of days, um, doesn't say, how was your day, baby? Because he knows if there's something in my day that's worth noting, that's worth talking about, I will. Um, so can you not simply talk about things of interest without being prompted, right? Like, can you not do that? If there was something interesting and noteworthy in your day that is worth sharing, can you not share that without being prompted? It's a very simple thing. You don't need to wait for a how was your day. That doesn't need to be the marker of caring. Does he do other things? Um, does he do other things? Are there other things he does to show you that he cares for you? Other things he does to show you that he is devoted to you? Um, being sad because you created an expectation and just to be clear an expectation is a story you create inside your head that disappoints you when it doesn't come true I'm, I'm, I'm creating a story in my head that if he asked how my day was he cares and so because you've confined the he cares into this this certain specific behavior and not looking at what he does to show he cares right what you actually do doesn't matter because I've created a story inside my head that if you do this, this is what shows me you care. Then you really are not seeing your partner. And by the way, if he doesn't do anything to show you he cares, why are you with him? This little behavior isn't going to be the marker. It's not going to be the makeup for the indifference. If he doesn't do things for you, then asking how your day was doesn't mean he cares. It should be in the behaviors. It should be in what he does. It should be in how he practices his love language. My loves, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Does hours of talk time mean anything? I mean, it's it's all about the behaviors. 
you guys it's all about the behaviors I do okay those of you who want a notification when I go live click my picture up here once or twice you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell click on the bell when you do that say I just did one behavior is is not an entirety you guys it's, it's like saying one puzzle piece is going to show you the whole picture you need to put all the pieces together in order to see the picture uh, I do couples coaching yeah uh, so I coach a lot of people who are in relationships you can choose to come alone to come get some help for your relationship my husband has never read fix that shit i don't need two people in order to help a relationship uh or the two of you can come together it's completely up to you i did i love it welcome 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 this is cute my hubby has wine waiting for me when i have a long work day uh, just so you know, I had to click recommended lives in order to get your notifications. Um, okay, Samar, did you also turn on notifications in your settings on TikTok um, and turn on notifications on your phone? I think we talked about this. I think you have. Oh, I finally get your live notifications now. Okay, love it. Why are attachment styles not important other than the fact that they can change? because you just, you don't have to give a label. You just, you look at the behavior. What are the behaviors that are getting in your way? What are the behaviors that are bothering you? What are the behaviors that will give you the outcome that you want? No label necessary. I'd done all that, but had to select a different setting in TikTok. Hmm. Chani and Maggie are so good. So if I don't like their attachment style, I just find someone else. So at the label, the attachment style label is unnecessary. The attachment style label is unnecessary. Have you helped men in your sessions? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, have, I have clients who are gay, uh, clients who are married, clients who are single, clients who are male, clients who are gay single males, right? Of every single type, you guys. Sounds like you live in a rainforest. I like it. You can hear the birds outside. How to go parent with a difficult pop-up dad comes by when he wants to. Um, I always recommend fix that shit in order to co-parent with peace and cooperation. There's ninja mind tricks in there. How do you balance reasonable expectations without lowering your standards? So first of all, know what your standards are. Uh, what books do you recommend for gay men? I do recommend No More Assholes. You, you're going to have to jimmy the language up a little bit in your mind. Um, but you can definitely use the tips in No More Assholes to find yourself a good man. Uh, so know, know what your standards are, right? Um, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other women. Um, but don't create stories in your head 
I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look for like I'm gonna understand the person, right? I'm gonna understand them. I'm gonna know how they practice their love language. What is their love language? I'm going to look for how they practice their love language, um, right? And and don't you know sort of like micromanage behaviors. Um, earlier on, we were you know somebody was saying I feel sad if they don't ask how my day was. Well, baby girl that's micromanaging right just tell them how your day was you don't have to wait for the prompting you don't have to create a story where if they don't say those words it means they don't care so you know know what it is that you want in a relationship but then don't create stories that micromanage behaviors standards and expectations are very different expectations are a story you create inside your head about fix that shit and a coaching session help me wonder is yes indeed love donovan all i use is mind tricks all the time cool starting to have feelings for the man i'm sleeping with uh oh that's not he was in there for i suggest you uh assess whether or not you want to just play because over here is play or are you now ready for a relationship? Like, are you in relationship mode now? If you want a relationship, then it's time to have the conversation and say, hey, I'm done my playtime, and now I'm looking for a long-term committed relationship because I wanna get married one day, I wanna have kids, I wanna buy a house, you know, whatever your goals are. Um, and you need to find out if they're on the same page because if they're not, then you need to end this situationship and start looking for the person who wants a relationship. I, all my sessions are online. Uh, all my sessions take place over Zoom. So anybody who wanted to get a coaching session, just go to my bio, click on the link tree, click the coaching button. It takes you to a page, follow the instructions to book yourself in for a session. Mind tricks means you understand how people think, right? Um, so for instance, understanding how people think means understanding that people like to be recognized, people like to be understood, people like to be acknowledged. So um, a mind trick literally is gratitude. When you show gratitude for what people do, it makes them feel good for what they do. And we are creatures designed to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So it's painful to do something for someone and not feel like it matters, for instance, uh, somebody who picks you up, takes you out to dinner three times a week, but you are upset because they don't say, how was your day, right? If instead you were grateful for them picking you up and taking you out for meals, then they would feel good instead of feeling bad, like what they did didn't matter. And when they feel good, they do more of the things that make them feel good. So they will do even more things for you because they feel like what they do is recognized and seen. So that's a ninja mind trick, understanding how gratitude versus expectations create more goodness in a relationship. So like training, we are mammals, right? What else, like you train dolphins, you train horses, you train dogs, you potty train your baby, right? You train the child to not cross the street without looking both ways. You train people how to read and write, right? So we are always training each other. We teach people how to treat us. So when somebody does something that you like, you acknowledge that. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're so good to me. When somebody does something you don't like, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who seeks the attention of other women. What should I do if my boyfriend wakes up at four in the afternoon? Uh, I hate it, I've told him that. So uh, why? Does he not work? Does he not have a job? Um, you know, I, don't, I don't know what's happening, why he's waking up at four in the afternoon. Uh, can you make a book about how to deal with the husband's baby mama? Yeah, it's called After the First Kiss. Um, so there is a section in After the First Kiss on how to deal with baby mamas. Also fix that shit. I might, I might touch on that. Like, you know, basically how to deal with your own emotions.
is exhausted because he's in the military. So you acknowledge that he's tired. Uh, is he a lazy person? Uh, right? Does he not contribute? Does he not do his part? Are you paying most of the bills and doing most of the housework? Are your books on Audible? No. Um, I do have an audiobook. It's Fix That Shit. Uh, you can only get it through the link to my bio, though. So uh, it's it's not that he's lazy. It's not that he doesn't pull his weight. He is an amazing boyfriend. This might be the only problem we have. It's not a problem. It's not a we problem, my love. It's a you problem, right? Acknowledge that. It's not a we problem. It is a you problem because you are creating an expectation. You've told yourself a story. An expectation is a story we create inside our head that disappoints us when they don't come true. So you told yourself a story. You said he needs to get up at a certain time every day. That's the story you told yourself. And when that story doesn't come true, you are disappointed. This is not a him problem. If he's going to work, paying his share, doing his responsibilities, it is not a we problem. This is a you problem because you are not accepting him. So this is your emotion to deal with, not his. So what are you experiencing? It's, it's anxiety, right? I've told myself he needs to get up by a certain time every day. And when he doesn't get up at that time, I start feeling anxious. And now I want to vomit this anxiety into the relationship to manage his behavior, to get him to change so I feel better. And what you're doing is you're making him the solution to your problem instead of making yourself the solution to your problem. This is your anxiety. So what are you going to do to reduce your anxiety? You're going to use perspective. You're going to recognize the fact that he is a good boyfriend instead of treating him like he's a bad boyfriend because he gets up at four o'clock. You're going to recognize the fact that he is tired and needs his rest. And, and this is not getting in the way of his responsibilities. You need to recognize the fact that he treats you well and he's a good man. And you need to recognize the fact that you've created a story and this is your responsibility to deal with. And once you start recognizing all of that and saying, okay, this is a me problem and I need to deal with this, then you start using the solutions that will ease your own anxiety. So that's meditation. Um, managing your behaviors, resisting the impulse to vomit into the relationship, resisting the impulse to make him the solution to your problem. So you do need to get fixed that shit, my love, and start doing what's in this book. Otherwise, you will create unnecessary fights. <clears throat> my relationship is failing. We've been together eight months. Used to be so perfect. So I would suggest a coaching session, my love. Met this great guy, loving, caring, mature, but I'm still attached to my ex. What do I do? It's going to take a coaching session, lovely. I need to dive into your mind, into what's happening inside your head to give you the perspective that you need for your particular situation to unhook yourself from this and focus on what you should be focusing on. You're welcome, lovely. How to deal with your boyfriend's friends that you don't like is causing problems. I don't want to hang out with them. So you don't need to. Uh, you, you don't need to, my love. Um, when he wants to go hang out with his friends, you, you don't have to go. Like One thing that my husband said to me that was quite liberating is you don't have to like it. So I want you to think about that for a second. You don't have to like everything. You, you don't have to like everything. Um, and, and you can just accept the things that you don't like. Now, are his friends getting him to talk to other girls, flirt with other girls, be with other girls, lie about being with other girls? That's a problem. But the problem isn't his friends. The problem is him. It's the choices he's making. Love to you. How to deal with husband's employee that likes him? How is he dealing with it? Because it's up to him, right? We are the ambassadors to our side. You know, I, I don't I don't ask my husband to come on TikTok and deal with the guys that pop up and flirt with me. I deal with it. 
Uh, so he he needs to be dealing with it. This is therapeutic. Have a listen to woman in ears. <laughs> it's cute. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. My husband's female coworker buys in gifts when she goes on vacation and calls and texts. Um, so why? And are you friends with her? Is she friendly with you? If she's not, that seems a little bit too clingy. Charlie's so good. He was here a second ago. He might have gone to go lay on my bed. That's his new waiting spot when I come and do lives is, uh, you know, half the time now he goes and lays on my bed and just naps there. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Uh, any advice on how to practice not saying sorry as much? I find it a habit of mine even when I'm not. So use a three-part apology if you are going to apologize. A three-part apology is I'm sorry for and then the specific behaviors that you're sorry for. I realize that. That's the emotional outcome it had on your partner. And part three is this is my plan for not doing this again. <clears throat> I have some good woman advice. <laughs> You're welcome, lovely. Uh, so did you guys know we got some we got some newbies do we have some newbies here today do we have some people here today who are here for the first time say newbie here does your partner have to come along with your family if they don't want to no 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 no. um if they don't feel welcome like when i when i hello my newbies uh when i have somewhere that i want to go and an event i'm going to attend um most of the time it's optional for my husband to go so I say, um, I'm going to, right? And, and you're welcome to come. And he says, maybe, because, uh, you know, he doesn't know how much work he's going to have. Hello, my newbies. Welcome. Look at all the newbies. He doesn't know how much work he's going to have. So, um, you know, the day of. Uh, and so he says, he says, maybe. Uh, if there's something that I absolutely want him to come with me to, like a wedding, uh, I'll say, we are. And then he makes sure that he makes the time to come do this with me. So, you know, it's okay to make outings optional. Uh, there's a lot of things that I went to alone. And I mean like parties, dinners, right? As I was I was the one flying solo and everybody else was coupled up. It, it didn't matter. It was okay with me because I'm okay with giving my husband space to do what he wants to do. We are individuals that have come into this relationship and there are things that we will do together that are important uh, to each other. There's things that I will do with him because I know they're important to him. Um, and there's things that he'll do with me because he understands it's important to me. But those asks, they're like, honestly, maybe two or three times a year, I will say to my husband, we are. Um, most of the time it's I am and you're welcome to come. So be fluid like that, right? right? Recognize that you are individuals coming into a relationship and choosing to pair up, but that doesn't mean that your partner needs to accompany you to everything you decide you want to go to. I love this. Uh, when I'm in a relationship, I usually give control to my woman spiritually and mentally. So I have... I have friends, um, Matt and Maria, when you, when you want them to come somewhere, you message Maria because Maria is, is the organizer for the relationship, which is really cute. Uh, 
so what about if he doesn't feel welcome in your family and you blame him for not trying enough so uh if you need a coaching session um so that i can get the story and help you understand how to navigate this do come get a coaching session because uh you know just because you think it doesn't mean it's right right uh so that's why i'm here because my talent is perspective and helping people understand what they might not be seeing helping people navigate their thought patterns because sometimes people's thought patterns are not what they should be right for instance uh you know creating a story inside your head and disappointing yourself with it so i don't know if he's trying enough or not enough i don't know what kind of uh, way you know these people were treating him that made him say you know what not for me I don't you know he might be one of those people that says either you accept me or you don't but I'm not going to bend over backwards to be accepted by people I don't think it's my job to do that um, so there's a lot of variables in there but I wouldn't I wouldn't default to blaming someone because other people don't accept them you know, sometimes there it's 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 someone else's bias that's getting in the way, right? It's someone else's toxicity that's getting in the way. So if you want me to do an assessment on your situation and give you like actual valuable advice based on the particulars that you are experiencing, because here the advice is worth every penny you pay for it, right? This is great for questions that apply generally to humans and how we interact. But if you want me to help you fix a particular issue in your relationship, your best bet is getting a coaching session because then I can get the details necessary to actually give you a professional response. He treats me so badly, but I don't want to leave. So that's okay. That's up to you, right? It's up to you. You, you get to make your own choices. You get to make your own decisions. You get to decide that you don't want to leave. You just don't get to come here and complain about the choices that you're making. Thinking about starting to talk to my ex. He moved in the same city, no contact in two years. Get an assessment with me before you do that, love. Don't go backwards. Uh, wanted to ask if you know anything about relationship OCD. Yeah, I deal with it all the time. Insecurity, overthinking, fear, jealousy. Um, so you can use Fix That Shit to help yourself navigate your emotions and your thoughts. Uh, or you can come get coaching if you wanted some uh, really more uh, precise, um, uh, you know, efficient. If you really wanted to, like, just in one hour, understand how you should be moving forward. <clears throat> Cognitive dis dissonance absolutely exists. You can complain about whatever choice you are making. Not here. Not here. Uh, right here here we break patterns we don't we don't um, repeat patterns refuse to break patterns and then complain about the patterns we're refusing to change uh, name of the book about exceptions I don't understand yes 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 because I'm a coach my love right like if, if people want to pay me to talk about the things they don't want to change that, that's fine i'll take that um but my my job the way i see it is a coach right so you're not gonna hire a football coach and then um just stand there and not move right you you need to follow instructions if you want a coach to help you um so yeah here here it's about change here it's it's not about uh coming just for sympathy or just to complain it really is about change here this is what we are intent on because i i like solutions i like people doing things differently to get different outcomes and then seeing how much happier they are that's that's what i live for 
Thank you for explaining, uh, caring about people enough to say what they need to hear. Yes, that can be hard. And I know that, right? Um, that's another thing I learned from my husband is the truth hurts. And for years, like we'd, we'd get in a fight and I would, I would deny what he was saying about me. And he'd say it like so gently too. He'd say, baby, the truth hurts. And I'd be like, mm, no, you're so wrong. Um, and then there was this day and I remember like we were going through couples therapy, um, like, like in, you know, with a psychiatrist, uh, we had just finished a, a, a session together and, you know, we took separate cars because, you know, he was coming from work and then going straight back to work. And I remember we finished a session and I was walking to my car and all of a sudden the words, the truth hurts floated back into my head. And I literally remember where I was standing, where this, this suddenly became clear to me. It floated up in my head and instead of pushing it away and rejecting it, like I normally did with those words, I, I said, okay, let me, let me think about this. And I literally stood there and I reflected on what that meant. I said, what is, listen, life begins when you ask the right question. I said, what does this mean? Because when you start asking the right questions, you start getting answers. I said, what does this mean? And then the answer that came up in my mind is when somebody says something and I feel a whoosh, a rejection, it means there was some truth to what I just heard and I need to isolate that truth and then I need to choose behaviors that make that no longer a truth. In other words, if I hear those words again, they don't affect me because they are not true. And I went, oh shit, there's some things I need to change because I'm having a instant rejection of things that are actually true about myself. And I really started reassessing how I behaved and I really started reassessing my emotions when somebody said something to me that instantly affected me in a negative way. Great advice. I'm going to take this to heart and I hope others do. Yes. So, and this, this is what, you know, like I do say hard things. I, I do say things that people find difficult to hear, but I create an environment where it's safe to reflect on it. And, and take those changes and apply those changes and have a better outcome. This is why I'm not into, um, oh, what is, what is uh, the attachment theories? This is why I'm not into attachment theories because all we need to do is gauge our emotions, gauge our thought process, make some changes and have a whole different outcome in our love lives. I understand I have trust issues. How long would it take to break it? It seems impossible. Um, it's really not. Uh, like, I, listen, I have a No More Insecurity program. It's a six session program. It's amazing how quickly you can change. You guys have no idea how easy it is because you haven't done it the easy way. There is an easier way. There is absolutely an easier way. You can lift a boulder like just just squatting in front of it and trying to grab it and lift it you can try and do that right <clears throat> or you can set up a pulley system tie a rope to the boulder tie it to the top of something pull the rope on the other side so much easier so here i teach how to how to change the easy way because i literally start with the way your body is created i literally literally start this with your brain structure. By getting you to change your brain structure, I make everything else easier. You can call me Ma. I have lots of adopted babies on here. So if you want to undo trust issues, if you want to deprogram your trust issues, come take my No More Insecurity program. Does anybody want me to do a book walkthrough? These are all my books, by the way. These are all the books that I wrote. Anybody want me to do a book walkthrough where I do a brief description of each book? Welcome to the happiest years of my life. We have a yes. Yes, book walkthrough. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, my loves. 
in the meantime, while I do this, you can set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Uh, so I've been watching, I've been wanting to buy, but not sure which. Okay, yes, we're going to do a book walkthrough. While I'm doing this, you guys, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Uh, so book walkthrough. First one is Come Back Queen. This is the book that helps your heart heal after a breakup. If you're still hurting from your last relationship, Come Back Queen is a book that's going to help you feel better. Then you want to make sure your next relationship is a keeper, the one that stays. So No More Assholes is a book that's going to help you make sure you choose the right person the next time. This is the vetting process. This is making sure you end up with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. Just did. Welcome, my love. Then you move on to After the First Kiss. This is the book, the book that helps you transition from courtship phase to reality phase. I do talk about baby mamas in here. I talk about in-laws. I talk about how to adjust to things getting back to the, to, you know, uh, our regular modes, right? Um, courtship is highly inefficient, guys. We all must go back to efficiency. So I really help you, you know, ease into that. Uh, Fix That Shit is a book that helps you have a relationship that has zero fights in it. This is one of the most important books you'll ever read, you guys, when it comes to relationships. My husband and I have fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. It is incredible. When you fight, there is a retraction of good emotions. When you stop fighting, there is a growth of good emotions because the opposite of retraction is growth. So when you do the opposite of fighting, which is constant peace, then you have a growth of good emotions, which is really nice. Uh, custom make goes really well with fix that shit. If you are codependent, if you're making your partner your purpose, it's time to make your purpose your purpose and also understand how to monetize it so that you start getting paid doing what you love, which is so fun. Uh, Perfect Play, this is a book for men. This is the dating book for men. How men get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker and not a selfish short-term thinker. Dating 101 is the textbook understanding the drives behaviors and emotions behind love no swearing in this one moms and dads get this one for your teenagers so they don't need no more assholes one day think love need not apply how to avoid posers losers scammers and predators this is a free ebook if you hit the free book button in the link tree in my bio and say yes to goodness 10 steps to a complete and happy you this is the book that helps you be happy in your life not just your relationships I love you too. Uh, is there a bundle? I don't have a book bundle, you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, but sometimes you can find sales. Uh, so um, you you can you can look for sales every now and then. But I don't have a book bundle. I appreciate you too, lovely. Mm hmm. love it yes we do yes we do are you guys gonna have an amazing day today where are my meditators at all of you guys who have now started meditating since you started watching listening to me reading my books if you're meditating say meditator here um put how many weeks or months you've been meditating for and write how you like what's different now for you do you sell your books on Amazon? Yes, thank you for reminding me. You guys can get my books on Amazon, pretty much anywhere you buy books online, but if you buy them on Amazon, I get a little bit more. If you want an audio book, it is only Fix That Shit right now, and you can only find it through the link tree in my bio. I love your confidence and how you're so sure. Thank you, lovely. I did, so, and that is something that I teach you guys, is how to elevate your confidence. Um, I was not a very confident person. Um, you know, going into my 20s, my mid 20s, I still lacked confidence. It's something that I needed to change, but I do teach you how to do that and no more assholes. Meditate here one month, feeling better. Love it, Carrie. Meditator three weeks, I feel happier. Good, good, good. Those of you, while it, while people are saying this right now, for those of you who are reading this and going, oh, I think I want to start meditating, I have a meditation resource button in the link tree in my bio. Um, oh no, sorry, it's the button that says free meditation guide. Hit that button. 
um, and help yourself get started on meditation or just go to my YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube, type Canada's Dating Coach, you're gonna find me. I have a Let's Meditate playlist. Start listening to track number two every day with headphones, at least once a day, but twice a day is ideal. You seem very nurturing, thank you. Uh, in a few months, I'll be 20. I try to learn to be more confident in myself and my decisions. I like that. Somebody's getting some freebies. Uh, just your presence makes me feel stronger. Been through lots, so I need to relearn that. I'm so here for you, love. A meditator here, about three years now. Love it. Uh, oh, it popped up on me. Where did you go? Uh... Meditator, three weeks, 20 minutes a day. I feel more secure with myself and my man, and I are happier. Hi, in Australia. Love it. Three years, I am better with pausing before reacting. Perfect. These are the realest women around. You're the kind of woman I let my guard down. Yes. Meditator here, three weeks. Advice on increasing confidence. I often feel inferior to my partner. Um, so I would suggest the no more insecurity, um, uh, the no more insecurity program, but meditation shrinks your amygdala, which is fight or flight, which is stress, fear, and anxiety. It also increases gray matter in your hippocampus, which is introspection and compassion. So you will feel less anxious and you will see yourself in a better light if you start meditating. So I suggest you start with that. Also, what you can do is read no more assholes. I do instruct you on how to start meditating in there. Um, and, and, you know, just really start being more self-aware. So I teach you who you are, how to elevate your confidence, be more secure about yourself, not vomit insecurity into the relationship and be grateful for your partner's devotion and love to you. I'm trying zero contact, but I work for him. Any suggestions? You can start meditating to ease your anxiety if you're feeling anxious. Yes, the biggest sign of respect to a woman from a man is when he lets his guard down around you. I agree 100%. 100%. Mindfulness exercises help with obsessive thoughts, feelings, and urges 100%. Yes, because it changes your brain structure. Thank you. I do meditate, but I need to be consistent. So um, it's a meditation helping with anxiety and PTSD, 100%. Um, if you need to be more consistent, if you hit that free meditation guide button in the link to my bio, there is a chart that you can print out that you can use to start tracking your minutes, get your minimum uh, weekly, you know, number. Like, you sh like, ideally, at the end of seven days, you should have done 140 minutes of meditation. Recently started talking to a Marine. He said, promise me you will never ever fall in love with me. <gasps> walk away now, immediately. Immediately walk away. Perfect, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Hola. Hola. So my loves, I'm gonna sign off. Um, my Amy's gonna be here soon. I need to redirect my efforts right now. Um, I'm going to give you guys one more chance to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Um, likely I'm going to go live again today. So, uh, if you guys want to know when I pop up again, let's, let's have you joining in. So click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Do take a minute to go into your settings on TikTok at some point and just turn on notifications in there. And then your settings on your phone, turn on notifications in there as well. Uh, you guys go grab my books off of Amazon. Uh, and if you want the audiobook, it's Fixatia. Go get that out of the link tree in my bio. Um, go get yourself some freebies in the link tree in my bio. You can get a free long distance guide. You can get a free meditation guide. You can get a free book. So go choose your freebie. Uh, you can get that coaching button if you want to gain some clarifications, some instructions, a plan on what to do about your particular situation. I give you scripts, I give you tools. I'm a coach, you guys. You know, I am proactive with the behaviors. This is not just talk therapy. This is, I want to know what to do. I got you. Uh, what else are you gonna find in there? Um, do follow me on Instagram. We just did the giveaway for the free hour 
of coaching this month, but we're going to do another one next month. So come hop onto my Instagram page and come follow me because we do good stuff all the time. Mwah. I love you. Love you. I will see you soon. Thank you.